All right, here we go. This is it. There you go, sweetheart. Oh, yeah. Now the video is going to be both ways. So my name is Sam, and the pandemic had a lot of good and bad about it. Mostly bad. And so it's pretty obvious what the bad was. A lot of the bad was, well, loads of people who died who would not have died from something. But they were good. As an example, the fact that there's been these amazing medical advancements in a short period of time, unlike any other time in human history, that's been really good. Another thing that's been good about the pandemic is, well, in bad, it's driven a lot of change. There's driven a ton of change, and there's a whole lot of people. We're living in an era now where we are living through the Great Resignation. There's a whole lot of people changing choosing to advocate for themselves unlike they may have a few years ago. And so like a lot of people, I also have a story <coughs> rooted in the pandemic that drove change. In May of 2020, there's one night I was out in my garage and I just started weeping. And I didn't want to scare my wife because that would probably terrify her. So I went on a walk and I started walking. And I remember that night, long story short, I came away from that night realizing I needed to change. There's things I believed, there's things that I, were doing, that I was doing that just wasn't true. And here's the cool thing. I was able to change. I can change. You can change. And here's one of the best, uh, most amazing things about change or what we're gonna call it from now on, personal growth. Personal growth is not just good for you, as in you. It's good for those closest to you and those institutions you interact with. And what we're gonna look at, we're gonna look at this idea that the institutions that we interact with, that they change us and we change them. The friends and family we interact with, they change us, we change them. And finally, the idea of changing for yourself. So let's start with well, institutions. So an institution is a conglomerate of people, groups of people. So I would consider, we're gonna use a broad kind of definition of this, an institution could be the wall wall you go to to get gas at, that's an institution. It's functioning as a group of people completing tasks. This is the Publix that you frequent. The chances are that if you live in Florida, there's a Publix that you frequent. <laughs> and here's the thing about these institutions, also where you work, they change us. They have a huge effect on us. Like there's research about this, but the truth is if we know people who want to particular colleges, anywhere in the united states maybe in florida one of those <coughs> florida florida state like it shapes who they are that now their whole life revolves around saturday during the football season because they have to watch it institutions shape us they change us and so i want to say to you be really intentional about what institutions you let change you what institutions are having an influence on you and here's the cool thing the flip side of this that if you grow as a person, become a better person, a more kind person, that you grow positively, you can help shape institutions. Think of your workplace. We've all worked with people who are total drags. We've all worked with people who are awesome coworkers, who make things better. And so here's the reality. When it comes to personal change, you and I becoming better is better for institutions. It's better for the places that we frequent. There's a book that came out in 2000 called Bowling Alone. And the main purpose of that, the kind of the main theme of that book is the idea of social capital. So social capital is the interpersonal relationships, the relationships with institutions, but like the relationships we have with other people. An example of personal uh, social capital would be when the pandemic hit, um, we were in a toilet paper one day. So I called a friend who manages a department at Publix and he hid a thing of toilet paper in a banana box and we went and got the toilet paper. <laughs> That's an example of social capital. But here's the thing. In America now, only 20%, only 35% of Americans can say they have four, between four and nine close friends. Only 35% can say they have, and here's how I'll define close friends. And they defined it in their research somewhat like this. It's somebody you can call. That the average American only has four to five, four to, doesn't even have four to nine people that they can call on the way home from work and talk about whatever they're going, whatever's going on in their life. But now we live in this world where people have a huge influence on us, 
but we have less and less people that are that we're influencing are influencing us. Because you do know that your friends really shape you. As an example, when I was a teenager, all my close friends had long hair and wore skin tight jeans. So when I was in high school, I had long hair and wore skin tight jeans. <laughs> In the same way, a lot of the kids I knew who were doing drugs in high school, their friends were doing drugs. It's really hard to overcome certain things, but we still need other people. And so the next aspect of personal change, when it comes to changing, you need to pick who's close to you carefully. You need to make sure that the people who are having the biggest influence on you are worth having an influence on you. Make sure they're people who are actually helping you bit helping you be a better person, whatever that looks like for you. And the flip side is, you make other people better. A better you makes other people better. It's that simple. So the next aspect, of, so that aspect of personal change is, change for the sake of your friends. <laughs> become better for your friends and watch how that has a re effect where they become better and they help you become better. That rich, rich friendships, we all need rich friendships. And going back to the statistics I quoted at the beginning of this, most people are lonely in this country now. So chances are, somebody needs you to be their friend. Finally, when it comes to personal change, do it for you. Seriously, do it for you. Here's the thing, if you want to lose weight, guess what? The only person who can do that is you. If you want to get a new job, the only person who can do that is you be willing to do things for yourself that if you feel like you're underpaid at your job go ask for a raise be willing to advocate for yourself that because the reality is i'm saying say this over and over again you're the one who's going to change you you're the only one who can change you and here's the thing we should be our biggest advocates we should be our biggest fans we should be the person who's constantly encouraging us because you know who talks to you more than anybody else? You. And then I want to tell you, you can change yourself. You don't need to have this moment on a, <laughs> in a cool May evening where you're weeping and you know you have to change. You can just decide to wake up in the morning and drink a glass of water. Do you know when you wake up in the morning you're dehydrated? And I guarantee you, if you started drinking two glasses of water before you left for work, you'd be a lot more shipper person at work. <laughs> it's a simple change for you. And we can see how this trickles back up. That if you make simple changes to make yourself better, you become better for your friends and family. You become better for the institutions that you're a part of. The personal change, my friends, is a huge, huge blessing to society as a whole. Because of that, it's worth doing. One last thing. Remember, the institutions, pick them wisely. Your friends, your closest friends, pick them wisely and advocate for yourself. Do not forget those things. And the final piece of advice I have for you is this. Start where you are, not where you want to be. If you want to be a bodybuilder, you're not going to have a six pack overnight. Start where you are and start making small changes working to become the person that you want to be. Because there's two things I really want to leave you with. You can do it, and it's better for everyone else if you change. Thank you. <laughs>